Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be a pretty quick video on how to use light groups and kind of like what they do. You can do some really cool stuff like do a VFX or digital breakdown of all the different lighting in your scene, show it at different lighting setups or whatever it is you want to do. It's a pretty neat thing and you can render it all at once in one go as long as you follow these steps. So let's take a look at this scene. I have a scene set up here with a little map and some objects and stuff like that. This is basically a sort of a preview of a new series that I'm working on for using prefabs and creating a really neat little animation like you see here. Let me just show you really quick. If I press play here, you can see that it animates into this map right here and we get a really cool scene. What I'm gonna show you is how to basically set up your render to where you can have some different light groups and you can do some fun breakdowns or you can just show different lighting setups to your client or just to yourself to see what it looks like. It's a pretty cool thing. So if we go in here, I'm just gonna add my overlays up here and make sure that you're on cycles because it works in cycles. And what we're gonna do is we're going to select some of our lights here. So I have this point light. This is basically like an outdoor, sort of like either a window or a just like an open door that comes into the scene. And we're going to set this up as a light group for the outdoor. So if I go over here to the object properties and let's go down here to where it says shading, light group, right here where it says light group. If you bring this down, you can type in outdoor and hit the little plus and that becomes a light group that you can select for other objects, which is pretty awesome. So the other thing is, if we go over here, you can see that I have a really cool little lantern here with a candle on the inside, and I also have a point light that helps to illuminate all of that area so that it looks like it's nice and bright. So what we can do here is we can call this light group lantern, and hit the plus, and then go over to our candle flame here, which is really awesome that you can actually take an emission object like this and do this as well. So you can see here, light group, change this to lantern. And now we have our two light groups. This little cube here, don't worry about that. I'm just gonna turn that off. This is basically a way to have this flame kind of flicker around. So I'm just gonna turn that off really quick because we really don't need that. And the next thing we need to do is just turn on when we do our render that we can actually see these. So let's go over here to the view layer properties right here. And if we go down the list, you can see that we have our light groups here, which as long as they're in here, they should be good to go. And let's go ahead and just set up some really quick parameters. So down here to performance, take off tiling, and I'll change this to a, let's do a 150% just to make it a little bit nicer and I'll pick a good frame. Let's do something where we can really see sort of a difference here. Maybe something like this frame right here, and let's render. So there's the render right there, and let's go ahead, go into the compositing here, turn on use nodes, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on, normally I have my, uh, my render here, I'll change this to the viewer node, when I do this, so um, with Node Wrangler, Control Shift, left click, you can pull in a viewer node like that. And in the render mode here, you can change this to the, let's just type in viewer node. So now I'm looking through the viewer node here and I'd have this on another screen. But since you guys can't see that, I will just put it in the background here. And if I Control Shift, left click on this, it will switch the different inputs to my viewer node so we can check this out. And if we take a look, we can go to, see right here it says combined outdoor. You can see there it has just that outdoor light. And then again, right here, just the lantern light and then the image where it's all combined together. So it's pretty awesome because you can just see what it looks like without anything on. And you can, as far as the indoor lighting, you can see what it looks like when it's just that and it's like pitch black on the outside, for example. And of course, the combined with everything to see how all of your different lighting groups is affecting the scene. So this is really great at kind of like troubleshooting some issues that you might have with one particular set of lights, whether it's a architectural render that you're doing where you're not really sure what's going on with the lighting or anything like that. So basically, this is something that you can use to just render out some different views of something with some different lighting setups, or you can actually do all that troubleshooting like I mentioned before. 
Now there is a way that you can take all of these images and actually export it or render it out to a multi-layer EXR where you can have a whole bunch of these things separated and uh, basically available to look at at any time in an entire render. I'm not going to show you how to do that on this particular tutorial, but just know that you can do that. I'll probably do that video next or just in the future, just so that people really understand how multi-layer EXRs work. And hopefully you can get some usage out of it because I think this is a really awesome way of just visualizing some different ways that the lighting is affecting your scene. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and this is something you can use in your next renders. I think it's a really awesome thing to just have in your bag at any moment, just to be able to have it available and see what's going on, especially when you have those issues with the lighting in your scene, so you can see what's going on. Thanks again to all of my subscribers, my YouTube members, and my patrons. I most likely wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for the support that I'm receiving from all of you. Look forward to the tutorial series where I actually show you how to make this scene, and I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.